Hey guys, it's Bobby Legs and welcome to another live stream collection review, State of the Collection. And our guest tonight is Jeff. Uh, Jeff, how are you doing, man? And uh, what you got on wrist tonight? Very well. Thanks for having me. I have the, uh, in, in your honor. <laughs> the Tron? Nice. The Tron, right? Yeah, yeah. I love it. So it was today's choice. Very good. Yeah, you know, I um you know, I'm happy it went to you. Yep. Um but um in a few few days after I sold it to you and and I picked up the uh, the camo uh the black camo digi uh uh, uh square titanium, I was like, damn, I should have kept the Tron because <laughs> um you know, it would have been nice to have like the resin um G-Shock, uh the metal G-Shock and then the titanium in the collection, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, but that's okay. I mean, you know, we can, you can get those um, yeah. uh, on, on the market these days. And in honor of you, and it's sort of a little bit of a tease, I am wearing my newly purchased oh, black uh, titanium square, the OG. And the yeah. reason why it's a tease for everybody who's watching is that at the end of the um, collection review, Jeff is going to unbox a watch that uh, when did it come in today uh, yesterday Wednesday Wednesday Wednesday, Wednesday. so you <laughs> so you've been holding on to it you haven't yeah. unboxed it yeah and it's right there okay okay it's don't like, give it away too much don't yeah. give away too much <laughs> um so let's uh say hello to some of the guys and gals on the chat or oh, money watches how you doing he's first um blue shirt buddha how you doing buddy uh design jason what's going on Underachieving watch collector. Hello, Nilo. Nilo is there. Peter C. What's up, Peter? Uh, let's see here. Joe Joseph B. I know. I know a Joey B. Who's also who also lives in Philly, but it's not the same same guy. But it's a it's a coincidence. There's probably a lot of Joe Joes in, in Philly. Um, let's see. Anybody else? Colin, how you doing? Um, and uh, and we'll we'll continue up Cowboy Swami, and and Ken, uh, guys uh, on the chat. Uh, let me know what you're wearing. I'm sure, Jeff and I are very interested in what you guys are wearing. So, Jeff, I start off with everybody um, who comes on and does a collection review. How did you get into watches, man? What was let us know. Show tell us about that first experience. Uh, if it was somebody you knew who got you into it, whatever it is, we want to hear it. Yeah, you know, I think it all started from uh, a career change about 18 years ago. And then, you know, with the wife, we, we used to go on cruises all the time uh -huh. uh, and, until COVID. And I've been on a lot of cruises. And, you know, there's always the luxury watches on the cruise ships. Yeah. And it's, you know, when you have your dad time and you're walking around, it's a draw. You mm -hmm. know, you get drawn in there. And you, then the kids go off and play. You walk in there with the wife and the wife says, you know, you need a nice watch. You don't have a nice watch, you know? Yeah. And, and so, so it's the wife who made the suggestion. Yeah, she kind of started it, you know? Wow. I don't know. It, it was uh, just kind of one of those things that I just kept – I started with, you know, a couple here and there. And then over the years, you get more and more into it. And and uh, lately, uh, once I, once I kind of got closer to 50, I really wanted to buy a Grail, go right for the Grail. Yeah. And um, – uh, and then that spiraled, actually went, you know, for the grail first and then, you know, back, back up a little bit for more, you know, different ones that I wanted. And the collection has just kind of grown. <laughs> so, so uh, on that point, let's, why don't we just j jump in uh, to the uh, collection here? Uh, let me see. Let me, I got to pull up uh, do, 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 and just let me know when you can see my screen uh how come all right just bear with me so so why why uh try to fix my technical difficulties here um so so you started collecting and then you kind of like went and and went for the grail and then you worked back so so explain a little bit more are you now are you talking like did you did you start watching some YouTube? Did you start um, yeah. um, reading some stuff about watches? Getting influenced that way? Please let us know how how that happened. Absolutely, got on Facebook, got into Horology Talk, 
started following a bunch of the guys, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Following you and, 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 uh, and lots of other guys, and I, I got, you know, and I got, uh, I got very interested in it. I'm, I'm kind of a collector at heart. I have a, a collection of quite a few things, whether they're oddball items that is not really the norm, or uh, you know, like uh, uh, five years ago, spinners were all the rage. You know, right? Sure, everybody, sure. Everybody's collecting spinners, right? Yeah. And, and I'm at my office a lot, and I have what's called busy hands, so I'm always like looking to do something. I'm looking to spin something, right? right? Well, then that that kind of spirals out of control, and you, you end up with fifty spinners of different metals and all this stuff, and you know, <laughs> and 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 then you get into tops and spinning top, you know, and, interesting, and the glass and the glass blown spin stations for the tops, right, and, right, you know, it just never ends, you know, and it just keeps going. <laughs> and, so, and, so you so you have that collector's bug, you know I, what I mean? I definitely do. I like can't have. Just one of one thing. I have to, you know, the G shocks. I have to get all of them. You know, just right. I very rarely sell or trade anything from any of my collections, whether it's you know handmade stemless tops, <laughs> whether it's tops, whether it's spinners, whether it's whatever. And I'm still, you know, I still collect that stuff. You know, I still look right. for, look for bargains. But watches is prime, you know, my primary focus. You know, uh, okay. but. You know, that's pretty much where it goes. I'm always clicking or doing something or, you know. Gotcha. So let me know. Can you see my screen right yeah. now? Um, okay. Uh, I can see that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So so this is where you, you, you sent me some photos. Um, and uh, and you said that this is where it kind of started it all for you. Yep. Um, now, were any of these um, cruise ship purchases or, yeah. or both not? Of them, both of them were. Both of them oh, were. great. Okay. Yep, the long jeans is the first one, and then I then I kind of you know I still have I, I love that watch, mm -hmm. and uh, and then I stepped you know then I went you know to the Raymond Weil and I thought the Raymond Weil was like the best thing since sliced bread. So you know? now, so I noticed now you, these are both uh, Chronos. Um, yeah, yeah I, back then I, I didn't even know what I was buying. Right, I was going to ask. Gotcha. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I like the nine and the three look. That was it, you know. Yeah, I've had them both serviced. They, they both still work great, you know. And and they're both uh, automatic movements. Yep, yep, yep. So so look, I mean, I, I gotta tell you, I mean, like for somebody, you know, dipping your toe in, and I, and I, and I did the same thing when I started collecting when I bought my first luxury box uh, watch. I actually, you know, went through that point in time um, in college or in high school where I was buying like you know fossil watches, right? I didn't know any better, you know. And then and then when I you know, kind of took some time off from from wearing watches or having anything, and then the first watch I bought after years was a luxury watch, and I just jumped right in, and I had no idea. I ended up lucking out um, because it's a good watch, and I still have it to this day. Um, but I think you know you pretty much um, you know lucked out in, in in the beginning here too, because these are you know you got long jeans, um, you got a couple of chronographs here. Not a bad way to start, I got to tell you. Yeah, the, the long jeans, the wife just messaged me, was actually purchased in Jamaica uh, when we got married, you know? Oh, so then very sentimental. So you got sentimental uh, value here. Yeah. That's awesome. That one start, that one really was the, you know, the, the, the start of everything. You know, and it, whatever it was 18 years ago or whatever, when, um, you know, all this kind of started, it's when I changed jobs to kind of a, uh, you know, from blue collar to white collar, I guess you could say. Gotcha. You know? And that that you know then then it's like oh I need a nice watch you know yeah I, yeah I never thought about watches or even G shocks when I was doing you know manual labor back in the day for all those years you know right it wasn't it wasn't a part of uh, you know it wasn't a part of it you know yeah it's it's kind of funny how like something is not part of your radar it would get in the uh, way you know doing yeah. the manual labor it would get in the way yeah and and then and then and then it and then it becomes part of your radar you yeah, know what I mean. Jeez, I, can't, I have so many things on the radar. Yeah. <laughs> I'll buy everything. Awesome, awesome. Let's see. Let's hit up the the um, the chat here. Uh, looks like a lot of uh, guys are just talking to each other. Oh, <laughs> oh uh, Penny says, "Just wife knows what's up." Cool that she encouraged him to pursue it. Yeah, absolutely. It's really 
it's 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 encouraging when you have somebody who who who, who encourages you you know mm-hmm. what i mean yeah. and um and uh, and and allows you to divulge you know uh get into this hobby which is you know it could be it it almost could be a one way street of this hobby in a relationship right you know you have one person who's really really into it in most cases and somebody who's not so it's nice to have somebody who maybe is not into it as you but is also very supportive of you and yeah. penny penny and her wife you know they they're both really into watches yeah. um and i find that uh, a little bit rare um I've never really come across many of that. So yeah, um, she encourages it, and I run, you know, things by her from time to time. Do you like this? Or, you know, the 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 quote unquote Grail was, you know, she was a part of that process, going through the, you know, looking at the different models and things like that. You know, as much as, you know, as much as right. my eight year old son was. You know, it, it, you know, he's nine now, but back then he was eight, and you know, it was going to be something that was going to be passed on to him. So I kind of wanted his input in it, you know? Oh, yeah, that's very considerate. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Joe, I think it's just more commentary to me. I wouldn't spend more than a couple hundred on a G-Shock with these titanium ones. Well, you know, Jeff and I have kind of like a, the same bug going on here. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to yeah. that. Um, I want to jump into our next slide. Now, I, I we didn't we didn't talk about order. So uh, I might be throwing some, um, some okay. things at you here. Um, Je- Jeff, hold on. You know, my um, stream yard is being really difficult tonight. I know Amin had the same issue um, with the, uh, the the PowerPoint or his um, browser um, a few days ago. So just bear with me. Um, okay. Let's go here, share screen. Okay. And so next one I wanted to um, show was this guy here. So I had a couple of questions for you today when I saw this because I was like, this is this is a really good looking watch. And I'm like, well, I mean, I wonder if this is a, a modded SKX. And then I, I quickly rethunk that. And of course, it's not a, a modded SKX just because typically you'll see them at the, uh, the uh, crown at the four o'clock position. Yep. Um, but uh, tell me, tell me a little bit about this because I, I like the little, the story behind it. Yeah, well, I researched, you know, started diving into. I need a good Seiko, you know. That was like yeah. the, the thing. That was that was the point. But I never, I didn't really want to. I want. I love the MM three hundred. I love that range. But those are very pricey, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're, they're in the multiple thousands. They're very expensive. And I said, I just can't see spending that much money. Maybe there's some other alternative. I came across Eric, you know, from Loom Shop. Yeah. Watching his videos and man, he is on point. You know, yeah. this, this guy knows what he's doing. You know, and, and I reached out to him and 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 uh, you know, with his input and my input, we designed that uh, that watch. It's you know, it's it's an ode to the yacht master a, a little bit. You know, with the um, you know, but it's more of a blacked out you know version, right? Of, of the MM three hundred is is. What I was really going after, uh, yeah. I one of my major problems with it is, uh, you know, it's a tall watch. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not a big fan of very very tall watches. Right. And he knew that going in, and you know, we wanted it a certain way. And there's no domed on that. It's, you know, flat to, for a reason to try to okay. keep it, you know, as minimal as possible. But, sure. Uh, you know, taller watches can become a little bit bulkier. And you know, I got that nice Crafter blue on there. Yeah. I think that's a crafter blue, the, the curved end strap. And that's a, you know, that's a great watch for hanging around the pool, doing whatever it, it can do it all, you know? So yeah. no, I and now I know his schedule is crazy, right? I mean, he, yeah. he gets tons of requests and, and, uh, and now I feel like, you know, getting something from him, right. Is, yep. you know, you, you gotta be really, really lucky yeah. or you have to wait a really long time. Um, uh, tell us about that experience because I'm sure there's people on the chat and people who are going to be watching this yeah. who see his work and is very interested in, in, in getting something done by him because he, he's an artist, you know, he really is. Yeah. Well, how long did this um, whole process take? Everything is by email. That's how we operate. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, 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 you know, he's, he's pretty responsive. I'll, I'll say that. Right. And, you know, he's very busy, of course. So it might take a day or so for him to get back to you. Then you pick out, you know, what you want. And yeah, you know, I was going for a blacked out look. And, uh, you know, once 
the final product was the whole process takes you know probably took a couple of months yeah well, and and once it was done he sent it to me a picture of it and i was like whoa that's not the bezel i wanted you know right right i, I wanted it blacked out maybe we miscommunicate he fixed it right away no problem no fees no nothing yeah and and he's very very good and uh then you know i i just kind of got suckered in not suckered in but you know i i follow his work on youtube yeah i like his videos i like the way he operates i like his attention to detail yeah and that's what made me you know buy the watch and you know his his pieces on the recon are like half of what people pay for them you know they right right they, you know that's kind of a shame it's you know, a modded watch is always going to be just a build. It's not an MM300, no matter right. what. Right. You know, it's all original Seiko parts. And you know, you know what I mean? It's not. Yeah. There's no aftermarket stuff on there. That's all yeah. Seiko stuff. So, um, so you, so you pay for the parts, and then you whatever his fee, right. um, and and that's pretty much it. Now, when when did you get this? Was this uh, recently, or was this a while back? Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I can't, I can't imagine. Like he must be now, especially when his channel is, is has blown up. Um, that he has much time to do, you know, yeah. as much work that that people, you know, he probably can't handle all these requests. Yeah, you know. I, so, so you may have gotten, you may have gotten in before it became like really, really impossible. And maybe down the road, this is something that you know the prices would change on that because. Yeah, um, I, I saw yeah. one on the recon that was done by him, and I think that. Price was six something. Yeah. Just looking at it, I know there's no way that guy paid that. I mean, right, definitely, right. Definitely paid like double that. And, gotcha. And, and uh, uh, you know, I know what these cost. And to some people, that price is not reasonable. Yeah. Know? Yeah. But, but to me, based on the work he does, I felt, you know, it was reasonable. Whatever the, you know, whatever it was, it, I, I just thought that he was, um, he's just, I just wanted one of his watches. That's really all. No, I understood. Yeah. So uh, JC is asking what movement is in that uh, watch. Let me look it up here. I wanted the better movement. I do remember this. Actually, I take that back. This was June of 2020 uh, when the final product was delivered to me. Oh, so that's like well, six months that, ago. Not that long ago. I had it wrong. Yeah. And the... Um, what, do you have a 6R in there? Yeah, or, I think you're right. There's a six R. Yeah. Let me scroll down here. Okay, six R fifteen. Yeah. Case matte black with the three case uh and the drilled lugs, polished sapphire display back, non-loomed, black matte signed S crown. Uh date wheel black with uh that crown does not have the um loom on it though. Okay. I mean th I mean that bezel does not have the loom on it. Okay. The first one did, but when you wanted the blacked out one, it doesn't. Gotcha. You couldn't get that. So it's it's a MM300 dial, MM300 hands with the lollipop seconds hand, which is what I wanted. Yeah. You know, to match with the round indices, sure. the hour yep. markers. Um, chapter ring black with white indices loomed. Crystal flat sapphire with clear AR. Rotating bezel, polished black coin edge. Uh, he says on here, bezel inserts, black SKX style. You know, loom ceramic. So right. it, this is kind of a hybrid SKX and a and a and a and an MM three hundred. You know. Yeah. Uh, Joe Joseph B, a uh, strong believer that every watch enthusiast should experience a Seiko mod at some point, whether they build it themselves or just figure out the design they want. Yeah, I mean that's 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 fair, Joe. I mean, I I tried modding my uh, uh, my SKX into a Yacht Mar Master style, and then. It, that was uh, a disaster, and then on came Mark from Long Island Watch, and and he made it. So um, I'm happy to have tried it. Uh, I don't stuff like changing the bezel insert, uh, the crystal. Um, those are not that difficult. You do it a couple times. You do it. You know, it, that's fine. Where it got where it gets tricky is changing the hands for me. That's what happened. I didn't even bother changing a movement, but it the hands is 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 really difficult, and I I ruined a couple set of hands and, and and scratched up a few dials, so um it's not easy for sure. Um, design is saying that he tried modding G shocks. My first few videos were about modded square with uh, gunman kit parts. Yeah, I mean that 
you know that 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 seems to be a lot of fun, uh, Mon and G Shock. So I may I may have to give my uh, a shot at that too. So um, have you tried uh, modding yourself, Jeff, or no? Nothing. I I watched one of his videos, like one of the earlier ones, and uh, you know, and I thought about that. Uh, you know, that that's not for me. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, look. I mean, you it, know, it's I it's not for me either. Is, uh, you know, to have his name on it that it was built by him. Mm -hmm. You know, he did everything. I got the extra strap so I can change it to the black bracelet with the curved end, you know, from whatever yeah. strap go or whatever. And, you know, I thought that would be nice if I wanted to change it. But the rubber's just so – the Crafter Blue is so comfortable. I, I haven't yeah. even changed it, you know. Yeah. I do that with a lot of my watches. I'll get a strap and I never change it, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right. So let's – jump into i which i imagine is your grail piece right i mean is this what we were talking about here yeah that one is yeah so this is the one you picked up and then you started working yourselves back in, uh into uh, into start like starting from scratch from collecting yeah. but so tell us about tell us about this one this one was your 50th right yep last august uh, uh and you know i knew the birthday was coming so i yeah. was saving and and uh uh you know in the in the horology talk and a lot of the groups of you know, the, the cell groups, there's a lot of reputable people. There's some people that are not so reputable, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of reputable people, right? Yeah. And if you reach out to the right person, you can make a connection. And, you know, around my area, the AD, like you're walking in there, there's nothing. Yeah. You know, and I'm not trapped. I'm not, I'm not doing any of that. I just want to find somebody I can trust and deal with them. Sure. You know, That's Absolutely. it. So I made a connection with a guy and, and, uh, uh, Started saving, sent them, sent them my pennies, and 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 uh, decided on what I wanted. He basically said, you know, within reason, I could probably find you anything you want. It might take some time. Right. You know, these are guys that know all the dealers and yeah. you know, whatever. I, I, I call it the gray market. Call it whatever you want. Yeah. You know, the, the box is full kit. All papers legit. You know, uh, the watch was you know uh, appraised by my jeweler, local jeweler who knows what he's doing and everything's fine, you know? Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, the date just, uh, the way that one there was kind of the decision of, I was looking for a 50th birthday piece and I was looking for an heirloom piece for my mm -hmm. son, you know? So he had a little input in it when we're looking at on the Rolex site and looking at the different models, you know? Yeah. And, uh, uh, one thing about it is, you know, I do, I will say this, it, it is blingy. Yeah. 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 And, and, uh, in, in, in my area, uh, for work, you know, I, I don't deal a, a super, a, a real lot in, uh, you know, high, 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 high dollar properties. Right. You know, I'm, I'm a real estate appraiser. So, um, you know, wearing the right timepiece to see the guy that's trying to refinance to, you know, put a roof on his house. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just not. It's right. You, you just got to, you, you wear a Seiko. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. No, I, I, I struggle with that too. And, and, you know, we're, we're, we have a lot of similarities in, in the way we look at things and, and the collect, like I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this piece or was looking at this piece, probably still looking at this piece initially as a 50th uh, birthday uh, for my 50th birthday, a couple years down the road. Um, Two years, two a little over two and a half years. I got for that, but um, but I I looked at it as more like a, an a a, a, a lifetime achievement <laughs> award. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and 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 pretty much similar. Uh, my taste is very much similar to the same. I mean, I I saw one with a um, fluted bezel, and and it, it, yeah, man, it 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 is blingy. And and I had to think to myself, you know, kind of like in a situation where you are, where you're working in an area where. You know, it's probably not customary to see so many people with a with a bling out Rolex. Um, like, you know, I'm just I just work from home. You know what I mean? Like, I, even before pre um, quarantine, uh, I wasn't really getting out much. So um, the only reason why I would buy something like this is for my own satisfaction, which is probably all that I need. Um, but I would fear that it wouldn't get as much wrist time. You know what right. I mean? That that's that's what I'm fear of. And for me, and then I talked to a couple of guys about this um, on this uh, on on the downside. That um, you know, I just have a. It just bothers me that that it, I would have so much money invested in something and it's just sitting in a box. Yeah. You know. 
I could see that. But, you know, I, I try, like everybody says, when I first started, you know, doing this, I was thinking about getting rid of or trading a watch or something. And somebody said to me, change the strap. Mm. Change everything. Yeah. And if you go back to the photo, you see that I bought the rubber B. Yeah. Because I want to, I don't, I'm not sure the white strap is going to tone it down, but it's going to be pretty cool for the summer. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah like, absolutely. That back up there. It, it might, it might tone it down a little bit. Uh, it probably won't, but right. you know, it's my little attempt at, you know, putting the curved rubber B on there and see, see how that goes, you know? Oh, absolutely. I totally get that. I actually went out and bought the, uh, what are they, Bergeron, the special, um, mm -hmm. special removers to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. I saw that one of your pictures that we have on there. Them on sale. And, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, 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 I still love the watch. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. And, and it's probably never going to go anywhere. Yeah. But I, will, I will say this. It does not, you know, it's the blue dial as well. It does mm -hmm. not get the wrist time that. Say the Zen 104 does, you know, like right. it just doesn't, doesn't. Oh, money watch is nice classic PCA, can, and you and and you're right, you can't go wrong with that. You can't. Really, yeah, my my objective was uh, timeless, and something for Sam, for my son. That when he's yeah. 25, and I'm old, I can, you know, he turns 21, I can hand it to him. You know what I mean? Yeah, something absolutely. Well, that will a stand the test of time, and b just be cool whenever, forever. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. No, I agreed. Agreed. Yeah. It's so it's, it's one of those watches that I feel like me personally, it would have to be in a collection one day and, and, and it will be, it will be. I just wrestle with any major purchase like that as always. It doesn't matter if it's a date just, if it's a, 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 a black Bay 58 for me, you know what I mean? Like I'm always going to wrestle with something like that because I, you know, while you're saving, you're doing a lot of thinking, right. You know, um, yeah. I wish I just had the, the dough right there. And then just on a whim be like that. I'm, I'm getting it. I mean, it, it just, it's almost psychologically, it'd almost be better for me. You know what I mean? A lot of things crossed my mind during the process mm -hmm. because, you know, let's be honest. I didn't send the guy, 10,000 or whatever, you know? Yeah. I sent them 2,000 to get started. Yeah. And then two weeks later, I sent them another two, right? Or another thousand, whatever, however the process went. It took months and months, but this was a relationship that I developed with the, with the, basically the gray market guy who helped me. Yeah. And we were in constant contact through the whole process. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Like it was, it was a good, I still have a good relationship with the guy and, and it was a good, uh, experience. And when I made that last payment, it was the watch was at the door the next day, just like he said it would be. That's awesome. And that was just a great experience. And Sam, come here, you know, come, here, come on, check this out. Look at it came because the family knows what I was doing. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. was, it was a big deal. And yeah. he made sure I had it for, for the 50th and I could wear it on, you know, the 50th vacation that we were going on. And yeah, my birthday it was just a just a great thing it's just everything worked out great you know it was yeah just, awesome I, maybe i got lucky maybe uh i don't know I, I i think i think with the right research you can always find what you're looking for that's yeah no i agree with that theory, you know yeah just like uh you know just like whatever you're buying and selling it, it uh you're buying the you're buying the bot you're buying the seller of as course. much as you're buying the piece yeah and we'll get to that with another watch there that I have. You got. So speaking of, uh, and you mentioned the 104, um, one of my um, all-time favorites, uh, the Zin 104. And I've always felt, and, and I probably keep on repeating myself, that this particular one, this one that you have here with the white dial, not only is the Zin 104 like a great gateway into Zin watches and the collection of Zin watches, but it's also a great, uh, gateway into German watches in general. And the white dial version of this watch is far more than a gateway. It's something that probably should be in your collection. I, I'm, I'm speaking in, in generality. I'm, you know, I'm not saying actually you, but I'm just saying that it should be in your collection and it should never leave your collection because it's a great looking watch. I think it's perfect. It's, it's close to perfect um, of a watch, in my opinion, as you can get. I, I totally agree. From the minute I got it, it was on my wrist, and I seriously wore that thing for like two weeks straight. 
Yeah. Never put a, a, another watch on. Uh, it, it, it is just great to look at. The bezel is fun. Mm -hmm. you know, it's the right size. It's perfect uh, uh, clarity. You can read it. The syringe hands are awesome. Yep. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm German, so I run the date, the, the day in German, which really appealed to me. It was cool, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah cool, it's getting to learn the different names of the German days of the week. That, yeah. that was cool. It's just something different, you know? And yeah. one of the things about that watch that I thought I would not like before I got it is the crown. It It is a little large, you know, it sticks yeah. out. But I'm telling you, I don't even mind that. It's easy to... You know, I saw your video on it. I meant to comment on your video. It it's really easy to operate the way the way it is, right? With that, the way the way that crown is, and uh, the um, strap. Uh, so I bought the um, I bought the uh, beads of rice strap for it. Okay. Uh, the stainless beads of rice strap. Talked about it with you about that one. Mm -hmm. I haven't. Uh, I was going to go black, but. You know, I didn't want the bezel to fade away, like somebody told me, right? Right. And so I went with this. We went with the stainless. I went with stainless, and uh, the strap has a ding mark on there, because you know, going in a lot of these houses, uh, I uh, came out of a three-family recently, and put my glasses on. I was wearing the mask, and glasses fogged up, and I missed the the railing in the last step. Ah. Oh. <laughs> on, on a big scoop coming out of a three-family house in the city. Yeah. And then I went, you know, I went up and down. I went over. And oh, geez. It wasn't a pretty sight. <laughs> the, the borrower was swearing, oh, shit, you know. Yeah. Help me up. And uh, then I I looked down real quick. I was like, oh, man, my watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, are you okay? I'm like, oh, yeah. man, the watch. And, I, and I, I showed him, and we were talking about the strap. And the guy's like, damn. He was upset that I that I, that I think the watch because he's like yeah. the watch looks new and I'm yeah. like it is, it is relatively new uh, but you know it's a battle wound and I'm just gonna keep it I'm just gonna yeah. it like that I don't care no absolutely I mean wear your watches and, and it is what it is but you know I, what I so I was happy yeah what what I like about this the white dial version I mean the the hour markers the syringe hands the they're they're um you know they got this um the black border around this, they're framed out with it, and it really, it really makes it pop. And, uh, you know, I'm, I know they just came out with a, a matte case version of it, which I'm kind of interested in. I didn't know if I was going to like originally the polished case, uh, especially for an everyday watch. I, I, I really not too crazy about having a full polished case like this. Um, but it, but it's okay. It works. Uh, and um, so I'm really curious to see what the Mac case looks like. And, and it's very, very tempting to pick one of those up for me. And, and, and yeah. I may have to do that uh, relatively soon because I, I, I love this watch. And I had, I had the opportunity to pick up the same exact watch a, a few months ago. And um, I was in the middle of uh, debating of whether I should just go for, for the big quote unquote grill piece. And I didn't want to be distracted um, by other smaller, smaller pieces. And, and, and I made a huge mistake and a huge mistake. It was at a great price and I should have done it. Yeah. So the, 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 these watches, they seem to hold their value. Very. They do. Very they well. do. The one of fours do, do very, very well. You're not going to lose too much money on a one Oh four. No. Sure. I'll tell you what uh, has attracted me lately is the nine Oh three. I've been looking at the difference between that and the Navi timer, the Breitling. And I'm, I, we'll get to a, another piece that I would love to throw out there as a bait for a 903, the Zen 903. I love that one. Yeah, the 903 was the first Zen that uh, really grabbed at me. Um, and uh, because, it, it, you know, obviously it looks a, a whole lot of Breitling, and we know the history between uh, that. Um, but um, – and then I started getting more into the, the toolier watches, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and that's, and that's where I shifted. So the one Oh three was definitely the, the first one that brought me into Zen. Um, but, uh, but I, I sort of kind of moved away from it and every once in a while I go back to it. I'm like, that's a, that's a really good looking watch. You know, I worry, I worry about the thickness of it. That's really what's holding me back. You know, you know, I look, I mean, I have that, you know, 
and um and it's a little bit over 15 millimeters thick yeah. um and it has a 7750 about you 7750 in it and it's fine i mean like it doesn't really bother me now when you get to maybe a 17 millimeter yeah. uh like some of the 103s are okay yeah. um that's that's i don't know that's that's i that i think that's a little too thick but again i, I haven't really you know it's been a while since i tried one on so um i think that kind of thickness might be a little bit overrated. I mean, for me, it's a, it was a little overrated. Um, it's not as bad. Um, you can always, you know, maybe if there's somebody in town or, or near you, you can always borrow their watch and see. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Colin saying the 104 and the, and the 41, you pretty much covered everything you want. And that's true, man. It's really true. I mean, that's th those two watches are, are just, are just great. You, you, like you said on your video, you could really argue the, 104 could be a one watch collection. I mean, I, I think so. I mean, I, why not? You know what I mean? Like, obviously, we're collectors, right? Yeah. None of nobody here on this chat is going to be satisfied with one watch. Yeah. But if you are potentially, you know, satisfied by one watch, I mean, the 103 I, I, is a, I have a good argument that the 103 could be your day. I mean, it's got a day complication, it's got a timing bezel. Um, you know, great readability, um, time, you know, a solid movement, um, German crafted, um, German made watch, you know what I mean? So, um, why not? There's, there's Jeff, def, and it's the right thickness too. For me, I love it because it's not overpowering. Uh, it's, it, it, it's just a great piece. You know? it's just yeah. So Kevin S is a love to get his in that no three these days, you know, the, the one thing. I'll go back to why I kind of like went away from the nine on three. I, um, you know, they, they used to, um, have the value 7750 in it, which is, you know, an, a movement that I'm intrigued about. I, I like the history of it. And then they replaced it with the Salita 500, I want to say. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I don't know for a while, and I, I still might be down on Salita compared to ETA movements, um, with no real reason why. Like I can't really explain to you why I have a bias uh, towards ETA as opposed to Salita. So that that was kind of like a little bit of bummer to me. But I'm kind of like, you know, that stuff is like, you know, it's kind of wearing away. You know, like the 104s have Salitas in it, and it's just perfectly awesome watch. So yeah. I don't know what my problem is, but <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's uh, keep it going. Um, now. Another uh, German watch here. Let's get this up here in your collection. The Young Hands uh, Chronoscope. Another another chronograph. So did you get, did you get this around the same time you got the uh, the long jeans and the Raymond Wow? Or is this was after the Rolex? This watch. Okay. And uh, you know, I saw it on the Recon. I I, I live on the Recon. Yeah. Yep. Me and too. I saw it there. Reached out to the guy. It was a um, a retired police officer, FBI agent or something out of New York City and uh, talked to him on the phone extensively. Uh, he had the watch and, and, and it was in great shape, sent me a bunch of pictures and, you know, very reasonable price. It's just something. I like the design. Yeah. You know? I'm not yeah. really into chronographs. Like I don't, I don't even care about that really. I, I just like the design. I like the, I like the, uh, the dial depth of the, sure. Of dials, you know, on that yeah. one, the close up is fabulous. And then, you know, because I'm into different metals and things like that, and, you know, things that I guess you could say <laughs> normal people aren't into, right? Like weird pens. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, I, I know a guy who, uh, you know, I found a guy who does a custom handmade Damascus steel buckles. Wow. Right? So, and, yeah, that went up here, right? So I, I, I found him and he, he has all different kinds of metal buckles all over his website, you know, uh, and he, every one of them is handmade. And wow. I had it, I had it done. I bought it. It came back. I didn't like the way it came out. It w didn't have enough contrast for me. Uh, so I, I know another guy who anodizes things, <laughs> you know, within the different groups I'm in, the, yeah. like the spinner group or the tops or, you know, whatever the case may be, some of these things get pretty extravagant and these metals are, you know, there's very few people that can create something like that, you know? Yeah. 
So then I reached out to him and I said, listen, I got this watch buckle. I need it to be, you know, etched so that it has more contrast. Yeah. You know? and, and I've heard from other people that something you could have done yourself, you know, and, uh, you know, other people in some of my groups and that's fine. But, you know, the guy's like 50 bucks. Send it off to me. Yeah. So I sent it off to him and I got it back just like that. Beautiful. I love yeah. it. That's and awesome. Put on that premium uh, leather strap. It's a great watch. It has the, it has the cereal bowl uh, underneath it. You yeah. Know, you know, I don't know if you know anything about that watch, but it's like a cereal bowl on the bottom. So very, even though it's a larger watch, very little of the watch is touching your, yeah. I watch a bunch of videos on it. It's very easy to wear. Yeah. It's a, it's just a cool piece. And the, the bezel is not like you would expect it. It, you know, moves like glass, you know, um, it, it, it slides rather than clicks. Right. It's like, it's like a friction. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like my, uh, my, my, you know, it's like a, a friction based. It's not like a click. Right. It's, it, yeah. it, it's very smooth. So yeah. when you're wearing the watch, uh, you easily move the bezel mm -hmm. by whatever you're doing. You, you, you know, you're, you're going to move the bezel. Yeah. So the bezel is going to move. So I'm always looking down at it, fixing it mm -hmm. to some people. That's annoying to me. I find it kind of cool. You know? Yeah. I, I don't mind it. And, and the, you know, the guy I sold it from, you know, back to this whole, you're buying the buyer. Yeah. He was very concerned you know, because he knew about the, uh, uh, the Seiko that I had. He was very concerned that I was not going to like the bezel and I would want my money back, you know? And he told me all about, all about the, the bezel way before I bought it. And yeah. I'm like, listen, I'll deal with that. It's a German watch. I, I like it. You know, I like the design. I'm happy with it. Let's, let's, let's do it. You know? Yeah. The, the, the I, I like it. I, I just like it. You know? Yeah. I, I, I buy things that I, that, that appeal to me. I don't really, you know, everybody says, oh, the Navi timer is the way to go. Well, mm -hmm. I like the 903. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's very important, Jeff. You, you, know, you got to buy. I agree with you. You buy, buy, what, buy what you like for sure. Uh, Penny says, I love you. Uh, I got a Young Hands. Um, you know, a Young Hands is, is a brand that, you know, there's, I, I, it took me a while to warm up to. Yeah. Um, and, I, and, it, and I don't know. And I guess it's because of the, the Bauhaus look. I just didn't know if I, I liked that or not. Um, but uh, I'm starting to open up to the idea of, of adding one one day um, because I do think that um, the simplicity, is, it, it really appeals to me uh, of, their, of their look. Um, cool. It, 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 I just, yeah. I like it. I, I wear it once in a while. I wear it once every two weeks. It's just good. Yeah. It's a good one. I like the buckle. I like looking at the buckle. You know? Yeah, no, that that I never even I never even heard of that um, a Damascus buckle. Um, and I think that's that's awesome. That is yeah. that is so cool. It's cool. It, it's uh, it's something different. You know, it's not uh, it's not for everybody. It's big. You know. Yeah. But the watch is big. You gotcha. Know, the watch is yeah. thirty seven millimeter. You know. I mean, yeah. It's a it's a good size watch. So there you go. Good good size buckle. You know. All right, so then let's take a look here. We have a, a little con uh, collection snapshot here, and I noticed a couple of things. Um, I noticed this guy over here. I have something similar, but uh, um, I, I shared with you my kind of story, my little nightmare story with that Steinhardt regulator. It's a, it's a cool watch. You yeah. know what I mean? It and really um, I got fixated on, on getting a regulator uh, a few months ago, maybe six months ago. And, uh, you know, Chrono Swiss... You know, they, if you can get an older Chronosphere for a couple of Gs, maybe maybe in the lower 1000s, they didn't want to spend that much on a watch that I knew that probably wasn't getting a lot of wrist time. So when I found the Steinhardt one, um, you know, I, I thought the price was was okay and 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 it had an ETA, the 6498, and I'm like, sure, why not? And it looks really, really cool. So, um, you know, I'm glad to see that other people have this watch. And fortunately, my, my, my story with it is just not a good one. But, um, but that, you know, that could happen to anybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, uh, um, a booker is, a yeah, the booker. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, you know, that's a, that's up there with the, you know, that's, a, that's, that was not a, uh, very, uh, reasonable, you know, cheap watch, but I bought yeah. it, bought it from a, uh, 
uh, a retired dentist out of Florida. And, uh, you know, this guy has, uh, he probably had 60 watches in his collection. This was brand new in the box, never even worn. Wow. When I asked him for a wrist shot, he told me it was the first time it, the watch had ever been on anybody's wrist. Wow. So, you know, I knew I was buying something that was never used, and that's what attracted me to the to the purchase. The the point of the of the booker was I wanted a day date. Yeah. It was easier to read than everything I had. Yeah. So that one has the big date, you know. And the day is pretty legible. The power reserve is just cool. Yep. But the you know, that watch is basically on the trading block or on the um uh on the for sale. I might unload it. It's it's a great watch, but it is uh, with the leather strap, it's you know it's a thick thicker watch. Right. It, it, it's a touch top heavy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You put a watch like that on a strap, it's it's going to be, you know, it, it's it's a it's a thick watch, but it has a lot of features. Great movement. You know, it's a it's a you know the small sub sub second sub seconds. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at it the other day, and I'm thinking, why why can't I get what I want from this, if I wanted to sell it, what what right. is the problem? What is the problem with this watch? I think, looking at it, it's dated. <laughs> yeah, it's got a little bit of a '90s vibe, a little old feel. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. Another problem with it probably is it's square. Well, that that I think is a, is a, is a problem there. I mean, I'm I I, I have no um, I'm not opposed to a square or a tonneau uh, shaped watch at all. Uh, but I think you'll you'll run into that a uh, lot of resistance. People people like you know, you know the round the round shape. You yeah, know? Well, like Joe, like a Philly watch fan just said, it's that peripheral rotor in the back. The movement is killer. Yeah, to watch the movement, you can get some great shots. You know, with that, uh, it, it's a it's a great piece. Uh, uh, you know, for that, it's really nice to watch it watch it go. You know. Uh, it's a cool watch. It has decent loom. Yeah. You know, water resistance. It's a, you're not going to do that with a strap on there though. I've never changed the strap on it. It's a, yeah. it's one that I'm just kind of not really wearing because I'm looking to move from it. Right. Whether, sure. Whether trade it or sell it. And, you know, I'm probably going to take a hit, but I, you know, I thought I bought it pretty good, but you know, from the couple interactions I've had trying to move it, it, it appears I, I, I didn't buy it pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> You, you know, you kind of find out quickly that, you know, the, no, nobody really knows about this brand. You know? Yeah, and and I was going to say that's the other problem with Carbuber. I feel like the um, <clears throat> they don't market themselves well. There's brands out there like like Gerard Perigo, which great great brand, um, yeah. but nobody, I mean, no people have heard of it, but I mean, nobody will take it seriously because it because they, they don't market themselves. You yeah. know, so now yeah. um, let's scroll over to. <clears throat> So here you go. We got a G-Shock and Seiko. So so this is a. I, I'm looking forward to get to this part because, you know, I, uh, man, G-Shocks are, are such a guilty pleasure for me. <laughs> um, and and when I'm feeling down and I'm like, ah, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to keep on saving for the X, Y, Z. I just I just want to get something right now. I uh, I go for the G-Shock and and while I'm paring down my collection, my G-Shock collection has gone up to like six watches. It's bananas. Yeah. Yeah. It's bananas, but but I think you, you and I feel the same way here about this uh, about this watch, and I and I love that you have a couple of metal G shocks here. You have the that silver metal one. You have the Tron, um, and uh, it's just they're just so much fun. They're just yeah. so much fun. They really are. The when I was introduced to the squares, the yeah. first one was the black, uh, you know, top row. Th second one from the right. Yeah, this one right here. Yeah, I love that one. I bought it off the recon. You know, basically brand new in the box, great price. You know, looked up the retail. I'm like, yep, this is a deal. Got to buy that one. I got it. I liked it so much. I went out and bought the stainless one. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then you came along with the Tron. And I'm like, oh, this is great. I love these squares. <laughs> yeah. And and the bottom left was, you know, that Cassie Oak that everybody talks about, uh, which I, you know, to be honest, it's a great watch, but I don't like the digital part of that watch. You can't really mm. do it. Yeah. I find that to be incredibly annoying. Uh, uh, I do like the days of the week thing. That's kind of cool. But, mm. you know, I think I bought the right one for legibility. 
I'm always concerned with legibility. Yeah, absolutely. The green, the green one, second one over. I've had that one the longest. That's is that a one, yeah, that's the one I wear bass, you know, when I'm fishing. On the is fishing. that Mudmaster? Mud yep, that's the yep. Mudmaster. The white one was this birthday in August, my past birthday. Told the family I wanted a white G-Shock, and that's what showed up for the birthday. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so that one's a little, uh, you know, it's cool, but I don't really wear it, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, the uh, That one was watched a review, and somebody said, this, should, this is the G-Shock to be in everybody's collection. You know, another square. So I saw it was a square, saw it was cheap. Yeah, got to have that one. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and the, the, the top left was I was at the jewelry store, and – I said, what do you got in here? You know, the guy who's a Seiko dealer. He's like, I got this one. It's pretty cool. I said, I said, all right. He said, you know, it's whatever, you know, 60 bucks, whatever. And I said, okay, that sounds good. You know, I'll buy it. Came home, looked on Amazon. The same watch is 39. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. You know, I never really wear that one. But um, when, it, when it comes to Seikos and G-Shocks, I always, I always check um, Amazon first. Yeah, that was, a, yes. you know, the guy's, the guy's great to me. So. You know, when I go in there and visit him, it, he doesn't never really has any. I'm just hoping someday they'll have a vintage Rolex or a vintage something, you know, but um, he doesn't really have uh, anything great. Uh, uh, oh, Dinky John Mayer, G you know, if it's not a square, I'm not really interested. Yeah. You know, <laughs> squares are life for me. Yeah. You know, yep. That's the, 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 there you go. All right, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. So. <laughs> We, let's see. Let's uh, see what. Um, I I I feel blue shirt Buddha, and I I agree. Yeah. G Shocks should not count in a watch collection. I don't. I don't really want them to count. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Okay, that's a, that's always a big debate. Are they part of? The, uh, or do they count or not? I don't want them to count either. But yeah. I count them. Yeah. I count them, man. I mean, they do count because they they first of all they weren't given to me for free, right? Yeah. Um, so I sought them out. I paid money for it. And I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. So yeah. why not? They are part of the collection. They do count. <laughs> that's that's yeah. my uh, that's my vote. I'm, I changed my position. I used to think I used to be a, like they didn't count kind of guy. Now now they count. Man, they deserve some respect in my yeah. collection. Yeah. Um, so now I want to I want to uh, get to this slide here because um, you got some interesting um, boxes. Oops, um, lost it over here. Sorry, sorry. Um, Yes. Come on, legs. What's going on here? There's a delay every time you click something. So, so tell me about. I, I'm really curious about this one box here on the right. So the, these are some jewelry boxes, watch boxes. Well, tell me about this one. All the watch boxes. Yeah. So that watch, that watch box on the uh, the one with the with the brass engraving on it. Yeah. Top, top left. Um, that watch box was purchased on Facebook marketplace from somebody in my local area, a real estate flipper that was, uh, flipping an antique property in a very rural area where I live. And they were up in the walk up attic and they found this buried under. So the story goes, okay, let's just yeah. let's tell it like it is. Right. Cause I don't know. Right. Right. And, uh, they found this box up in the attic buried under a bunch of boxes. And I said, well, you know, she put it up there. And it was just a regular box. It has a, it has a shelf on the inside. You know, so it has the shelf that goes inside the, yeah, you know, the box. Right. So then, I said, "Well, this is just a great, just a great box, you know. I'm going to turn it into a watch box. It didn't have the cutouts and everything that you see, and yeah. you know. So I found a guy, local guy, a contractor, uh, in, in another rural area. So I, anyway, I bought this watch box from the lady for seventy five dollars, shipped to my house. Wow, <laughs> right. Wow. So, um." And you can see the inscription there. Yeah. It says presented to Lynette June 30th, 1867. Wow. Awesome. It's an antique, right? So yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm in a lot of rural areas for work. And uh pre-pandemic, I walked into a 
antique store that I frequent. I love old things, you know. Yeah. And uh, in, in the in the very rural area, and I showed this guy a picture of this box. And I said to him, if you own this box, what would you put it on your shelf for? And he said, $650. Wow. wow. I said, okay, great. So then I found the guy to um, make me the inside piece. You know, the, the yeah. I don't know if you have a picture of that, but. Uh, I'm not sure. It, 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 it's the inside piece of the um, um, of the box, right? Oh, you know, you did give it to me. I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't put it in. I'm sorry, my bad. Right, but it 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 it's like the cutouts, you know. Yeah. Yep. So the, the guy made the 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 cutouts out of a church pew from 1850. Wow. Right. That's, that's amazing. Story go. That's yeah. what tell me. And you know whatever the 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 piece of maple fits right in the box. Yeah. The first, the first one he did uh, didn't even fit. He met, he he calculated it incorrectly. So this is this is the general idea. You know. Yeah. So he had this was the first one that didn't fit. So he had to take this bottom piece off. So he made me another one that fits without the bottom piece. So you put that in there. And then you go on Etsy and get the pillows, which yeah. is in my pictures. And yep. now you have a now you have a full blown custom watch box. Awesome. And, and the lock, the lock on the box still works with the original key from eighteen fifty seven. <laughs> That's so cool, man. What a good find. You know, my my Mrs. Legs would love that story. It's amazing. She, she loves that uh, old stuff too. We yeah. have we have we have this pew right here, right? Oh yeah. She found on Facebook. It's it's um she wanted uh she wanted a wooden um kind of like long bench that had like an opening so you could put stuff in. Found out she found something on on Craigslist and I went to go pick it up and I was speaking to the lady and she was from England. And she was like this used to be a pew in a church in 1600 in Belgium. I'm like what? <laughs> like I mean it's beat up. It's beat up, right? Yeah. So like I don't know it's not worth anything. But to know that you have something i mean mrs legs was all over it she was like get it come on just you know rent a van go pick it up get one yeah. of your friends yeah. um and so i mean i'm not as crazy into old stuff but that's kind of cool that we have something that's 400 years old right over here yeah, absolutely. And, you know it was a great find and i still to this day look for boxes and things like that on the marketplace all the time you know it, it just really it, it, it's really special. I put it on horology talk one time and somebody said, that looks like Satan's, you know, cause the box has intricate carvings on it and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and the guy, somebody said, uh, it looks like, uh, uh I'm afraid that the devil's going to come out of there or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some kind of, I, mean, I never really saw it that way, but uh, yeah. you know, it, it, I get it. It's, it, it's just cool. You know, and yeah. the, tray, the, the tray on top makes it even cooler because all the watches are hidden. Right. Not like the yeah. other I have. Where you can yeah. see the watches, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, it's really neat, you know. Kevin says he can't find the keys of his house, but you have the keys from the Civil War. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> yeah. Kev, Kevin's always good for the jokes, man. Uh, yeah. Keep them coming, Kevin. So, all right, Jeff. A uh, few questions here uh, before we go into your new um, unboxing of what you got. Um, that's what's in, which I'm sure you're dying to unbox. Yeah. Um, so you. you you know, you're, you're a collector. You, you don't really, doesn't seem like you, you flip a lot of watches. That's not your style. You like to, to accumulate and whatnot. So what is your, what do you have in mind other than what you have that you're going to unveil today? But is there any other piece down the road that, um, that you're looking forward to adding to your collection one day? Uh, the Ketlars I'm on the list for the, Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm hoping it's, you know, uh, Early 2022, I, I doubt yeah. it'll be, I doubt it'll be 2021, uh, but I, that is the next big one. I oh wow! Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, of course, I want to uh, acquire all of the squares. I want the OG. And I yeah. want the, the opposite one of this, which we'll yeah. get. You know, yeah. uh, because I just love the squares. I yeah. want to complete the collection. It's just something. Yeah, that yeah. I, You know, uh, I am uh, currently uh, in the middle of some uh, major uh, projects on my houses, uh, 
where I live and my investment property, uh, new roof coming in the spring. So we're, we're doing our save the pennies thing. And yeah, sure. I need to hand that guy a bunch of cash come springtime. Yeah. So no major purchases, but, uh, I certainly one day would love to acquire, and this might surprise some people. I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, the Rose gold yacht master. No, that's a beautiful watch, man. Though. It's I way mean, out of range, of course, but it's yeah. it's, on, it's on my five year radar. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. That's a I that's know. a that's a forty two, right? Yeah. It's a forty two mil, and um, and it comes with that Oyster Flex uh, rubber. And it, yeah, seven and a quarter wrist. It, it'll be fine. Yeah. yeah, and I like it because it's not super thick. Right. I also no, like. That, you know, no, that's I, a that's a great looking watch. I found as my tastes evolve, I I don't like thick. Watches. It's kind of what's yeah. turning me off from the CFB. Every time I wear it, I'm always moving it. It's very, very top heavy, you know? Yeah. And tighten it up. It just, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe somebody else could. I actually reached out to them. I wanted the bracelet to give yeah. it a second shot, you know? But it was like 700 or something. So I said, yeah. forget that, you know? But I, I love the I love the Yacht Master. But the next big one is the Ket, the Ket, the Ketlars, you know? So I stand corrected. I believe uh, uh, Colin's correcting me that the rose gold is forty millimeter, and that the uh, forty-two is is the white gold. Yep. Um, I think that's what they were they were getting at. Okay. So, um, Amin, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, so let's let's get to see it, man. I mean, you this piece right here. This is the one that I'm going to be looking for shortly to finish complete my uh titanium uh g-shock square collection so i know you've been waiting for a couple of days yep. let's see it let me see if i could put you on the big screen uh yeah there you go oh hey. watch gauge nice yeah from our guy there yeah i talked to him extensively very knowledgeable oh yeah i love john that's where i got my um the tron from yeah, I, got him I, John. I reached out to him uh, on the on the other ones already We'll see what, you know, I'm not sure anything can be dug up or whatever, but. Oh, yeah. He's, he's the guy. You know, he is the guy, for sure. There you go. Yep, yep. I think I'm going to like this one when, when, I, when I get it. I think I'm going to really like it a lot. Yeah. So, of course, it has all the, you know. Yeah, the, uh, the, all the accoutrement. No, the yep. Nobody really cares about that. Yeah. <laughs> it is actually pretty decent packaging for 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 it, Cassia. It, it, it gives you a nice box. Yeah. Um, oh, there it is. The blue digi. Yeah. Tells, tells you basically what's inside. Yeah. Right. It should be no surprise. Yeah. There it is. Yep. There it is. Very That's exciting. awesome, man. Congratulations on that. Let's get the cover off it here. Yeah. It's it's really it's light. Uh, my, oh, my, so light. It's my first TI piece, you know? Yeah. So That's it's so cool. That looks great, man. Oh. That's awesome. I couldn't be happier about it. Yeah. It, it is super Oh, well, that was upside down. It, it is super light. Yeah. My first impression is very, very light. Yeah, very, very light, and um, you're gonna like it because it, uh, it's not a thick watch. Obviously, it's, a, yep. it's uh, and uh, and the proportions are are the same. You're gonna and Bluetooth. It's got all that kind of stuff in it. I, I sync up mine to to my app. Oh well, yeah, I do too. Yeah. Um, and um, the only so the only problem, and I, and I think, and it, the, the one downside to these. Is the uh, the pin and collar? Um, that's how you're going to adjust. Yeah. Um, which is not, I guess, it, it's not a big deal, but it is. It, it's a little bit of a pain in the neck, as you know. Yeah, um, I, I did my other ones just fine. I, I yeah, think I'll figure it out. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal at the end of the day, um, but it is a little. You know, it is what it is. Anyway, it yeah. is what it is. But uh, you but yeah, take your time. I think you know. Yeah, that's that's the thing. You take your time. The kids got to be in bed. You yeah. know, just have a nice little, no, 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 uh, just nice glass of water or whatever beer you're drinking, whatever. And just like take your time with it. But, yeah. um, because I'm always, I'm always nervous that, um, that it's going to snap up. I know if the, if the collar's in there, you should, it, it's an unrealistic 
um, um, concern on my end, but I yeah. always worry. Yeah, I, I I I did the other ones. I think I, I'll figure it out. I mean, I got I'm pretty yeah. pretty uh, experienced at it now. I did yeah three of them. You know yeah. So it, it, it it's uh it, it, actually are those different systems on the other ones? So the ones, so the, the, the Tron, you have the spring inside, right? So like, it's like, you, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, yeah. you go in there with your with spring bar tool and it's almost like a, like a spring bar, right? Yeah. But it's inside the, it's not like where you typically have the spring bar, obviously up here with the, um, end length, uh, of, uh, you have it like inside over here and you, and it's actually pretty simple. It's pretty easy to do. These are, these are the push collar. These are the, like the Seiko's like, um, like uh, like you, if you have a Sarb thirty three, uh, that bracelet, um, it, it, you have to push it, and, oh, and it pops out the other end, and then there's a collar in the in the uh, center center link. Oh yeah, okay. I'll I'll watch Random Rob's video again and figure it out. That's what I did. That's what I did. I, I watched his video last night. Um, and uh, you know, I, I need a refresher every time I, I do one of these. Yeah, I mean, I, I could bring it to my guy. He'll do it for like five bucks. You know. Yeah. To bring it to the jeweler, it's no big deal, I guess. The watchmaker will figure it out if I don't want to do it, or if I stumble, you know. Yeah, I think, I think, I think, you know, after I get the um, that same watch that you got, um, I think I'm gonna go full. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go for a metal square. It may mean it may be the Tron. It may be just the black. Um, but uh, I, I still have. Uh, I, I know a lot of people like the Bling Master. I, I'm still not there yet, but I, but I could be. I'm not saying that it can't be. Yeah, um, I, I know Colin likes that one. Yeah, like, Colin does. Yeah, that one's not for me. I, I, uh, I I'm not going to rule it out. I, I won't rule it out. Yeah, but I, know, um, I might be able to rule it. Out. I don't know if I could ever see it in my, in my collection. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. This one's really cool. Yeah, I, man. I love the light, the light feel. You know. Yeah, you know, and so the black digi camo is awesome as well. And I know a lot of people. It seems like the higher the, the the ranking, right, from a lot of people that I know who who have experienced all three, would say that the the full black one, the OG is number one, the black camo is number two, and the blue is 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 three, and uh, and whatever it is what it is. But I think the digi camo, the the blue digi camo pops a little bit, and um, where the black is the black, and the uh, and the black camo is uh, is subdued. Um, I like the pop from the blue. Yeah. yeah, you know, I'll tell you, the black OG is the one I was really after here. Yeah, to be honest, that's right, really, that's really what I was after. Yeah, but you know, I have the black, um, you know, the black coated one. You know? Right. Um, but I still wanted the black OG. But I I love the look of this camo one. It's great, and you know, it was just what was available at the time. He didn't have, he didn't have a. Thank you. Yeah, God. yeah. He didn't, he didn't have the uh, the, the other others, so he'll get them. And yeah, you just have to go on. You go on recon. You know, I know. <clears throat> like a month or so ago, <clears throat> I saw a guy. Um, actually, somebody else brought it to my attention. But by the time I got to recon, it was gone. Um, but he he actually posted this person posted a watch you seek for a thousand, and it was like a uh, for the for the all black, and um, and that was that was gone pretty quickly yeah, so I mean, it, 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 it you can find them it's just uh you have to act very very quickly yeah 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 you got me on the full screen there still oh that's okay man that's all right oh, all right yeah <laughs> I, 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 I dig this this is cool it's a it's a good it's 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 different than wearing the other one it's definitely light you know yeah it's definitely lighter you can i think there's over 50 gram difference in the two Probably, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not really good with judging weight, but I mean that that sounds that sounds about right. I mean, put put your put your Tron, hold the Tron, and then yeah. hold that. You That's know, true. I could weigh them both. I have a scale, of course, <laughs> but it, it, it's really uh, it's it's really cool. It's 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 something different, you know. It's, it's yeah. And now I'm just curious, like what's down the road for um for these titanium but i think they seem to i think they're all limited editions um but i think they sell pretty well um 
Right. So I'm I'm just curious to see what like the next iteration. I know like there was a rumor that it was going to be a red um, Digicamo, but it turned out to be a red um, 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 all metal square. I think I, I don't think it was I don't think it was uh, titanium. But a um, white one. Well, you a white one? You want to see a white one? I'd love to see a white camo. Yeah, like a white so, and grayish kind of camo. Yeah, yeah, white and yeah. gray. The Tron is one fifty six six grams, and the 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 blue Ti is one oh seven seven. Yeah, so you're pretty close. Yeah, yeah. So there you go, 50, 50 just about fifty grams lighter. <laughs> you you definitely notice the difference. So Colin, Colin is suggesting you you, you start up a channel called Wearing Watches, which. <laughs> <laughs> I got the scale handy. Why not? Why not do a well, Jeff, man, we ran over uh, an hour and ten minutes. That's awesome. I think there that might go. be a record. There that might go. be a record. Uh, Great time. Uh, I had an awesome, awesome time tonight, Jeff. Um, thank you again for for coming on to the show and and talking cool. about your collection. Um, Jeff, do you have anything? Do you have any social media you want to plug? Anything you want to plug uh, for everybody oh. to? I stay under the radar with that stuff, you know. Okay. The, the, anybody can find me on Facebook and, you know, PM. Yeah, you're you're on the you're on the groups. I'm on the horology talk. I'm in a lot of the yeah. group, but yeah. I'm always watching or commenting on the things. But I, I don't. My Instagram is like non-existent. Gotcha. There's not. I don't. I don't post anything uh, because, um, well, a lot of different reasons. But. Yeah. No. Understood. Understood. But, well, guys. Um, Thanks for joining us tonight on a Friday night. Um, I hope you had a great week and hope you have a good weekend scheduled up. Uh, I'll be doing another stream on Sunday, actually. Um, Penny's going to come on. Um, awesome. So she's going to talk about, you know, she's not a, f a flipper, but she's going to, she's talking yeah. to, she's got a situation here that she needs some, uh, some time on the psychiatrist's couch. So, uh, me and the guys uh, are going to talk her through what uh, what she's going through, and you guys are more than welcome to join. And um, guys, uh, hopefully next uh, Friday I can get somebody to uh, do another uh, collection. So if you want to do a collection review, um, please uh, hit me up. Uh, the email is in the description below. And Jeff, again, thank you. Thank you guys for coming in on, uh, and uh, and spending your night with us, and uh, I'll see you in the next stream. Cool. See show. you guys. See you guys.